So today let's talk about Linux from scratch. Now we're going to talk about what Linux from scratch is and I'm going to talk about my experience building Linux from scratch. Future video I'd like to go over some of the details showing you how I did that. Not today. Today I'm going to talk about my experience and also about what first about what Linux from scratch is. Now I'm reading off of some notes that I have here, so bear with me. I just jotted a few things down that I'd like to cover. So here goes. <clears throat> so basically, Linux from scratch is where you build an entire Linux system from scratch. So you basically compile every single component from source code. Now this is different from a system like Gentoo where yeah, it compiles everything from code, but they have systems to build it for you and instructions to build it for you. Now Linux from scratch, you're actually downloading all the tarballs, all the for each individual project, compiling them and arranging them completely yourself. So Linux from scratch is kind of a distro, but it's really a book that shows you how to build your own distro from scratch. So that's what it is. It's not based on another distro. So when you build Linux from scratch, <clears throat> you're not building a Linux distro. Um, it's not based on something like Debian. So it's not like Ubuntu building their distro based on Debian. You're building it completely from scratch, not based on anything else. So any case, <clears throat> for the build, you, you have to build the kernel. You have to build the system utilities and user land tools, a ton of different GNU utilities and all sorts of other different pieces of software from all over the place. Um, the book tells you exactly how to do this and um, any other software at all that runs on the system, building from source, compiling it and integrating it. So yeah, this, this involves downloading the packages and compiling them, integrating and configuring them, um, partitioning the drive and setting up grub, making it bootable, and um, any config file, like everything, things you never even thought of, like the time zone, um, localization, even if you're not using multiple languages, you still have to do that. All sorts of different pieces all have to fit together. And one thing a lot of people don't appreciate about um, distributions is the effort that goes into getting compatible versions of software. So every package, every piece of software comes from, a lot of them come from different locations and each one is an individual piece. And one version may have a bug when used together with another version. And one version of software is dependent on another version. So each version is dependent on another piece of software. There's this whole web of like interdependencies. And if you have the wrong version of one thing, it could break another thing. So there are all kinds of bugs and things that could break to keep track of. Now the book kind of does a pretty good job of keeping track of this, but it, it leads you to appreciate the work that a, a someone has to go through to create a Linux distro and to, to maintain it and to keep it free of bugs and to actually test it and get it to work. <clears throat> so it leads to a whole nother level of appreciation. Now, one thing to be aware of is once you have your built system, it's pretty minimal. There's no graphical environment or desktop to start out with. And there's no package manager. If you want to update software, you have to recompile it again or rebuild it. And um, you have to keep track of dependencies and everything else manually. It's um, pretty inconvenient and one of the reasons uh, a lot of people who build LFS systems don't continue using them in the long run. Now you can add a package manager or create your own package manager. People have done that and that's where some distros have actually come from. Uh, people have followed Linux from scratch directions and they have created actual successful distros that they went on to create package managers for and to maintain. So another thing to be aware of is BLFS, Beyond Linux from Scratch. It's additional software beyond the basic core system from the Linux from Scratch book. So BLFS is a separate book from LFS, and it will show you how to build the desktop environments, the servers, the server software, and all sorts of other software, a lot of which you probably take, you take for granted. Um, any case, so let's move on to my experience. Now, currently it is August, 2023. So early August 2023. Now I originally built an LFS system way back in 2006, 2007. I think between those two dates, I think I might have started in the winter and finished in the spring. 
I, I forget the exact dates, but a, a good while back, my first Linux from scratch system was back then. Now, I recently built a newer system this spring. I've been planning on doing this for so many years. I've finally done it again, and I want to maintain it this time. So this spring of 2023, I built a newer Linux from scratch system. Now, I would like to use this as a base for a distro, and I'd like to maintain it and do all sorts of great stuff with it. Now, my goal will be to build a fully functional production ready system for both desktop and server use that will run on multiple platforms and I'd like to make it as flexible as possible and I would like to maintain this system. So that's kind of my goal here. So in any case, I wanted to use system D. Now I know that's controversial. Um, a lot of people have different things to say about that. I feel like it's probably a better choice for enterprise use. A lot of enterprise systems kind of rely on it. And I really did have kind of high hopes for running this as a quote unquote enterprise system that uh, will be used widely across the industry. And I just felt like partially that's a better choice. And to be honest with you, I actually kind of like system D. Not everything is good. Um, binary logs, um, I'm a little bit hesitant to give my thumbs up to those. They do have their advantages. I don't know that it's worth it, but a lot of the log utilities that exist on, on Linux systems running system D these days are actually really convenient and practical. And I feel like a lot of what system D does is something that is needed. And uh, there are alternatives. There are, are a few alternatives out there that you could use and they may well be better. But right now, I feel like System D was the right choice. I know that's controversial. Um, people have uh, very strong opinions on System D, but that that's what I chose to go with. Now, if you don't like System D, you can just as well go through the instructions and build your own system. That's fine. You don't have to use System D. You don't have to use my distro. You don't have to use any distro that uses System D. You don't like it, don't use it. You can, there are other existing distros that don't use System D, and you can feel free to just build your own system without System D. So Sys via init still exists, and you can still build systems with it. I know because I built this first. I built my most recent LFS build using System V rather than System D. Now there are two versions of the book: the System D version and the System V version. Now, or SysV init version, right? So there, there are two versions of the book. I did not realize the system D version existed. I somehow overlooked that and I used the wrong version of the book. So I'm gonna have to go through and rebuild that system. Kind of feel bad doing that because I actually do kind of like SysV init, but I, I feel like system D is the right choice for this distro. So any case, <clears throat> let's see here. So system B being controversial and all, and all that. So yeah, built a system with sys, system V init by mistake. Now my plan so far, I have a working system and um, it's a basic core system that doesn't do a whole lot. Now I am planning to rebuild it using system D as I've mentioned. Now I have gotten the system working on a USB drive. So initially I built it on a hard drive on my desktop and I have gotten it to I've installed it manually on a USB drive. I've gotten a working USB drive to boot up with it. I'd like to use that as the start for an installer. I'd like to create my own custom installer. I've thought about using existing installers and I kind of feel like I'd like to create my own custom system installer. I'd also like to automate the rebuilds of the system. And I'd also like to build a newer, better kernel with more options that make sense and um, something that's more production ready. So, and I, I might copy some of the settings or base it on some of the settings from existing distros and use some industry best practices and stuff like that. But I will, that's one of the things on my to-do list to uh, get done. Also, I would like to add initRD support. Um, so you need that initial RAM disk to support a lot of modules during boot time, <clears throat> allowing you to use certain kernel features. Certain kernel features rely on that, and they're left out of the, uh, th those features are left out of the Linux from scratch book because they require an initRD to work, and that's a whole lot of extra stuff. That's kind of like a, another project for another day. So in any case, that's another thing I'd like to build on there. Um, I'd also like to build a huge range of extra software for desktops and servers, basically following along with the BLFS or Beyond Linux from Scratch book, which I have not gone through yet. So that's going to be a big part of building this distro. Now, 
what I'm thinking of doing now is to add a native package manager. Um, I'm kind of, as crazy as this sounds, I'm leaning towards creating my own package manager. People have done that, people have had success with it. I may very well drop that idea and just use an existing package manager. You can just as well take existing package managers that are used on popular Linux distros and just take the package manager and use it with your own software on your own distro and just integrate it in. I may very well do that. The other thing I intend to do is add flat pack support, which is great for a lot of desktop software. And as I understand it, and I would like to just integrate flat packs in so people can use flat hub and uh, so my native package manager will you know handle some of the core utilities and things that i've built but you using flat packs will kind of uh help push me ahead really far so i can quickly integrate in tons of great software like like uh like gimp and, and other sort other great things that you can just instantly start adding on as soon as i have a working system and get me up and running pretty quickly also i think flat packs a lot of people like them and um uh, you know, people like them more than snaps. People hate Ubuntu for snaps. Um, it is what it is. I don't necessarily hate snaps myself. I know that's a controversial thing to say, but um, I don't think they're terrible. I don't currently have plans to use them in my project for sure, but um, I feel like flat packs are the popular and probably right choice to use. Um, I'm not completely settled on that, but that's probably something I'm going to use. Now, I would also like to build this for other architectures like ARM. I'd like this to be working on Raspberry Pis and other single board computers. I'd like this to, this to also be working on 32-bit Intel systems because right now it's only built for 64-bit systems. I'd like people to be able to download this and install it on their old 32-bit, uh, like an old laptop that's been sitting in your closet that's a 32-bit system. You should be able to install it on that. Um, at least uh, at least without a graphical environment, if nothing else. Just a simple, like if you want to just install a simple text-based system for testing on like an old Pentium 4, you should be able to do that. I'd like to support ideally as many architectures as possible. Now, that's about it. That's my experience. That's what I've done so far and kind of what I'm planning to do. So I'm going to be, I'm going to have some more uh, videos documenting what I, what I'm doing with this. Um, things are kind of slow going. Um, as of now due to a ton of other things I'm doing and you know I have real life to work on like full-time job uh, you know kids to take care of all that other stuff you know and and ton of other stuff for this channel and for my other channels I have like basically a whole network of YouTube channels and blogs and plenty of stuff to keep me busy which kind of slows down my progress with Linux from scratch I you know when I get a chance I, I work on it but I, I fully intend to kind of build this up into a full system and I do you have a set of instructions that I have published online that are really messy? I may include the link to that in the description of this video. But I have the instructions that I used. I, I basically took the instructions in the book and there are certain commands that they leave out like the, the command to untar things and to uh, you know, delete the file after you've untarred it and stuff like that. They don't put those in there, but that's a lot of copying and pasting to do and a lot of you know copying file names around and stuff like that. So I took the commands from the book. I added in like the, the commands to untar each package because there are a lot of packages. It gets really, really tedious and it's a really long and slow process. So I've added those into my own instructions, added my own notes and modifications and my own way. One thing they didn't cover in great detail in the, the book is how to partition your system properly. So I included my instructions on how I partition the system. And I included a lot of stuff in my personal notes on my run through and currently they're incredibly messy and hard to follow, but I published them online. I'm gonna to try to remember to put the link to that in the description of this video. And I'm gonna to try to clean those notes up and I'd like to review those notes in a future video. Not sure when I'm gonna publish that video, but stay tuned for that. Ideally, maybe I'll publish it within this next week, maybe tomorrow, or maybe I will get sidetracked and not do it for another month. We'll see how that goes. I have a ton of other video ideas and a ton of other things I'm working on right now also. Um, you could expect to see who knows how many other videos come out before that video, but I, I intend to have that video come out. I'll show you how I built Linux from scratch, and I'd like to document all the other things I'm doing with Linux from scratch, all the modifications I make, all of the beyond Linux from scratch packages I make, and all the progress I make. I, I intend to document this and provide as many as much instruction as I possibly can. And I will eventually get this distro once I have an installer in place and have everything put together. I would like to 
I, I intend to share this distro so people can download it themselves. So you can either follow my instructions to build it or you can download the built system, the binaries for this built system with an installer that you can quickly just, you know, plug the USB drive in, boot off of it and click next, next, next and it's installed. My idea for an installer is to make something as simple as possible and anything you want to configure, you configure after the fact. So defaults that make sense get done during the install process and as much that can be done by default should be done by default and you configure things that you want to change after the fact. That That's what makes sense to me and that's kind of how I want my installer to work. In any case, um, stay tuned for more of this great content and uh, that's it for today. Um, hit that subscribe button. Don't miss out on the other stuff we have coming up. Uh, you want to hit the bell icon, otherwise YouTube won't let you know when we do come out with new videos. Also, if you have your own experience with Linux from scratch, leave a comment down below, not just for me, but for the next person who comes and watches this video. And any comments, questions, criticisms, do leave a comment down below. I try to read the comments when I can. Sometimes I answer within five minutes. Sometimes I don't see a comment until five months later. Um, because YouTube basic, or, or Gmail basically gives me alerts when I get comments on my videos, but it's in another tab for social media updates that I don't always see. But I, I try to kind of keep on top of my my messages and alerts for YouTube. In any case, um, yeah, any comments you have, leave them down below, not just for me, but for the next person coming along. Um, give me a thumbs up, and that's about it for today. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on that next video.